going? It's Andre Butler here in Detroit. Excited to go live with you guys today. Uh, excited to have a guest with us that uh, I've really been looking forward to uh, introducing to you guys. Looking forward to uh, talking with. I believe this is going to be great today. So, uh, as you're joining us, let me know you're joining us from. And hi to all those who are catching this a little bit later. I see we've got Will with us, and Asia, and Ebony, Ebony, and Tameshian, and and others. Uh, it's it's kind of a beautiful day here in Detroit, considering. I mean, it's still a little cold, but you know the weather's starting to turn. So uh, excited about that! Uh, excited about what's going on with FX Church. You know, in our new building now. So we've had two Sundays there, and God's been good to us. So we're excited about that as well. So people always want to call right when you start a live, right? So <laughs> so anyway. Um, Excited about my new book, Bay or Nah, which is, is just come out maybe a couple weeks ago. I've been hearing some great things about that, getting great feedback almost every day. And if you want to get that, that's on Amazon and at AndreButler.com. And um, just a lot of good things going on. So I'm, I'm excited to connect with you guys. What's up, Will and Simply Thriving and Nita and Donna? Good to catch up with you. And Amer, is that right? So, what's up, words within me? Good to catch up with you. And Tanya and Jill. So, anyway, we uh, we have a guest today, and I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm fired up, so I'm not even going to wait. I'm, I know people that are jumping in, but uh, I've watched her ministry for a while now, I guess. It's been years, really, that I've uh, watched what God's done with her, how God has used her to help so many people in particular women and um and so i am excited to have heather join us so i'm going to link her in and let's go so and for whatever reason that button didn't work great oh there we go there we go hello hey how are you doing man? good how are you doing well <laughs> let me turn it up Good to connect with you. Yes, good to connect with you too. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited. Thank you for jumping on with me. Uh, but some, a lot of people that are connected with me know who you are, but some don't. And so okay. if you can just kind of give them a little bit of information about, let them know a little bit about you and what you've been doing. Okay. I did that. Hold on. Crap. What am I doing? Okay. There we go. Hold on. I like self. I like some filters better. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi everybody, my name is Heather Lindsay and I'm obviously a believer. I've been married for 10 years, almost 11 years to my husband, Cornelius, and we have three small children. Um, I've always had a passion to help women. That's just been like burning in me my whole kind of life since I gave my life to Christ. And I actually, it's so funny, I gave my life to Christ at one of your father's events in 2003. And so I always have like a soft, you know, spot for your family in general, because it's like the Lord used you guys to host an event and I gave my life to Christ there. So um, that's always just been, you know, it's been amazing. But for me, I have a women's organization called Pinky Promise. It just encourages women to live for Jesus. And that's always been my passion, like just to see women break free from those generational curses and walk boldly in what God has called them to do. So it's just always been a passion of mine to help other women. Um, also entrepreneur. I always say I've been an entrepreneur since I was like seven. <laughs> so entrepreneurship and like business has always like kind of been in me. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my story. Yeah, you, you mentioned entrepreneurship. You know, what's driven you there? I mean, is it something that got, what? what's driven you there? I mean, how, how did you get involved in that? Is, is that something that God just kind of put on your heart? I, I've noticed that, that you uh, seem to always have something going, something <laughs> Great coming out order. So I, I, was I was the person in college that was working, you know, that had was taking 18 credits and I had three jobs. So I worked like literally three jobs in shifts. So I worked the night shift, the day shift. The, I mean, I was always like, I've always been a really, really hard worker. Um, I have 24 sisters and brothers in my family. And there's, you can imagine you have to be very resourceful. If you need something, like you're either gonna have to work really hard for it or you're just not gonna get it at all, right? Mm -hmm. And so like growing up, I watched my mom, you know, work with other moms that were in 4-H and they would come together 
and there our animals would mate <laughs> and we would sell the donkey or we'd sell the horse. And I saw my mom doing that. And I was like, hey, mom, I want to get involved because I try to sell lemonade outside and the return on investment is a disaster. We lived on a dirt <laughs> road in Michigan. It was a small town. Not going to happen. So um, I just remember from a young age, like I always, you know, wanted to start my own business and I always wanted to work for myself even before it was popular. Mm -hmm. I've been selling on eBay since 2004, 2005. You know, and back then it wasn't popular then. And, um, but I've always just been like a hustler in that mindset. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I noticed recently you've been doing uh, matchmaking. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> that one I don't know. Off off and things just kind of went from there, huh? So, um, if you follow my Instagram, my son is over here talking to me. Um, if you follow my Instagram, um, you'll see that I've been doing like these matchmaking posts where I'm just on there and I'm like telling people, um, hey, if you want to connect with somebody, you have to have a couple of requirements. First one, you have to be saved. You have to know the Lord. The second mm -hmm. one is you have to be single for real. Um, and the third one, um, you have to be serious about a committed relationship and marriage. Um, the funny thing is I have been matchmaking my friends for the past 13 years. So if somebody comes around me, I'm like, hey, are you single? What's your type? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I start asking them questions. And my husband, he it drives them up the wall. Because I literally meet a friend, a new friend. And I'm like, so, are you single? You know, he's like, babe, you're not matching them. Like, leave it alone. You know, stop. <laughs> Can I help you? Come on, guys. Oh, you don't want to? OK. Um, but I, so matchmaking has been something that I do kind of, you know, on this, not even on the side, just for fun. And mm -hmm. most of my friends, I've matched them, which is so funny. But I remember I was at a speaking engagement and I saw this woman and the Lord told me to connect her with one of my guy friends. One second, baby. With one of my guy friends at the time, or, you know, one of my husband's friends. And so um, she looked at me and I was like, hey, I know your husband. She was, that's the first thing I said. She was in line to get her book signed. And I was like, I have a husband. I, I, I know who your husband is. And I was like, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I heard the Lord. I was like, are you single? And she's like, yes. And I was like, perfect. Write your email down, your phone number, whatever you're comfortable with right here. And let's connect. And I'm going to pair you with this guy. And she looked at me like I was crazy. But I was like, I know I, what I heard. And two months later, they got engaged. And so now wow. I'm married with kids. But it goes on and on. My old assistant paired her together with my old house manager. Now they're married. Mm -hmm. um, people that go to our church. Like, I just love to pair people. And sometimes I do it in a, in a subtle way. Like, for example, I invite both of them over at the same exact time to the house for, like, hangout time, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and people have gotten married off of that. So it's just so cool to see how God works. But this is my thing. I know people are weird about online dating and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. Um, that's why I like matching in this way, um, mm -hmm. because you get to know a person and a person, you kind of put them together. Um, but this was my thing about it. I felt like I know so many beautiful young women that are single and I would look at them and be like, why are you single? You are beautiful. You are godly. You've been waiting on the Lord. You trust him. You're walking by faith. You've been patient. You're not just out here dating whoever. And for me, I'm like, why? Why not connect you, right, with somebody that's godly, that loves the Lord? And so I've kind of slowly making my way into matchmaking for the public because I've always done it privately. Mm -hmm. But now I'm kind of opening it up to everybody to see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some comments, you know, and uh, it's, it looks like people are really, they're, they really love that you're doing it. And, and I'm with you, you know, God, God cares about the desires of our hearts. And for most yeah. people, uh, that's a huge desire. They want to be with the person God has to them. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes uh, too, I like to use the word spooky. They're really spooky about this issue. And um, I've had some conversations with friends as well. And they're kind of like, well, I won't do this. I won't do that. I'm like, Bro, you want to get married, right? You know, but, you know, there is a part you have to play here. And Thank you. God has a plan for you. God has somebody for you, waiting for you, or and, and you've got to just go ahead and, and do your part. So I like that you did what you did. And when I saw it, I was like, that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> you have the platform for it. And I'm not surprised that people are already getting to know each other. 
Oh yeah, we've got matches already. I get so many DMs like, hey, I'm talking, we just, one couple made it official yesterday. There are two different countries and they connected. Um, that's the thing, like I noticed this when we had our church in Atlanta, we have all these gorgeous women and all these single men, they would come out and everybody would leave and run and go their own way. So I was like, if I can think of a, a way to like get people together, right? So they, you know, they can, marry. that's what you want. Like, can we just keep it real? Like you want to be married. You're, right. you're doing it God's way. You're tr you're trusting Him. You're tired of dating, just whoever. So, so yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. And you. you know, like, like I said, it's it's really the desire of God's heart. I was just looking at something mm -hmm. today. Just happened to see a friend of mine posted it, uh, and it was talking about how you shouldn't feel guilty about asking God for your desires. Right? When, Isn't that crazy? Hey, my, we'll get you. You know, he says whatever. He didn't what you need he said whatever exactly on your mind is on god's heart yeah. and so i mean i see that you know the greatest blessing that you have outside of following this is the person that god puts you with oh, and then yeah, of course, sure. children you have with that person so you know i think this is the year for so many people to really just let god do it and, uh, and trust them for it. And, you know, I, I was preaching something this week. I was just talking about not giving up, you know, and, and I've, I've noticed that people will say, you know what, I did the whole dating thing and I'm done. I, I quit. Mm -hmm. like, well, you can't quit and then say, but I want God to give me a spouse, you know, even, even adjust men fall seven times and rises again, right? I mean, you, you've got to maybe make some adjustments. Maybe you need to do some things differently, but mm -hmm. you still got to give God faith. got to let him bring faith, right? So, so anyway, I love what I love what you're doing. I think it's a great thing. I think it's I'm excited, but I thank think you. I will couples, and uh, I think you're helping that happen. Awesome, thank you. And I and I, you're so right about that. It's frustrating to me, like people that come to me and say they want to be matched. They're my friends, mm -hmm. and then I give them suggestions about how you could be better, how you could better yourself, and they're like, "Oh, I'm not doing that." Well, oh, I'm not gonna match you then because you don't understand. Marriage is about dying to your flesh and dying to yourself and being mm -hmm. the best you that you can possibly be within a relationship. Um, and people are like, well, they need to accept me how I am. All right, that might be why you're still single, right? Because you're not willing to be pliable or flexible or be willing to change or, you know, maybe work, working out is okay because it releases endorphins and makes you feel better, right? And it makes you look better. And eating healthy, maybe we should put down that fast food, okay? Mm -hmm. Not only for a season, but forever. Let's put it down. Let's learn how to cook, right? Let's. Let's start our own businesses. Let's seek the Lord. Let's pray. Let's develop some fruit of the spirit. Let's start applying the word to our life. So the thing about my matchmaking, which I'm not getting into all the total details of it, but some of the details are I'm going to be challenging people. Are you your best you? Because right. the thing is, you want them to be their best you. You got this whole list of everything this person needs to be. But if you look at that list, you're not on that. You ain't on there. You know what I'm saying? Like how? Right? So it's like, oh, he needs to be debt free. Are you debt free? You got $500,000 in student loans. <laughs> and you talking about he needs to be debt free to come rescue right. you. I'm sorry. Right. Like, let's put down the fantasy and let's keep it real. Marriage is hard. It takes work and you got to do your part. Yeah, I just saw somebody posted. They said, my friends think I'll be single forever because I want heaven on earth. I think that there is something about, there is something to uh, fantasy versus reality. And that, yeah. yes, God, desires of your heart, um, but you're still talking about another person, you know? <laughs> so there's going to be have some <laughs> issues. They're still going to have to grow in some areas. Um, you all will still have some conflict. Obviously, learn how to deal with that the right way. But, yeah. um, you know, there is, there is and, and, and sometimes people are, you know, obviously, I just did a book along these lines. And one of the things I wrote about in the book Congrats. was being, okay. And, um, you know, you want to be picky when it comes to character, unquestionably. But yeah. sometimes so picky when it comes to even, you know, little things. Hey, he's got to be 6'5", and God sends this guy that's 6'1". You know, she's got to have long hair, and God sends this gorgeous woman who has short hair. And you're like, no, I don't want that. Well, that might be why you're single, too, because you keep Thank passing you. up people that God's sending you away. A, a thousand percent agree. I think we need to take our list and say, where did my list come from? Did this mm. list come from my unrenewed mind that I had before Christ? You know, you wanted a bad boy, but a bad boy makes a bad husband, right? You wanted him to go to jail. You like that fighter man in him, but is he, is he, is that the type of son you want, right? So you have to ask right. yourself, where did that mindset come from? Where did my list come from? 
And am I willing to be flexible? Um, it's funny, I was talking to a couple people about matching them. And I'm like, okay, tell me what your type is. And she's like, okay, he need to be 6'3". And I was like, okay, I hear you, he needs to be 6'3". But what if he's 5'11"? Uh-uh, mm -hmm. if he's 5'11", that ain't gonna work. How tall are you? You 5'1". What's the problem, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? So I, I feel like sometimes our desires can be a little superficial, right? Now, I do think we should be attracted to our one day spouse. I do think so. But at the same time, I still feel like we've got to be flexible. Like the guys I dated before my husband were like six, five and higher, right? I always thought I was going to marry somebody that was super tall. And my husband was, was shorter than the guys I dated in the past. And I thought that was weird because when I first met him, I was like, wow, he's so short, but he's not, he's six, two, right? But I was like, dang, he's kind of short. But the thing is, like, I'm glad I didn't say, well, mm -mm. he's not like, you know, my ex is so I'm not going to entertain him. Obviously, he's not like my exes. That's why I'm not with them, right? And so I had to really just even renew my mind um, with who I wanted as well. Yeah, you mentioned the whole bad boy thing. Uh, this came up in yeah. one of the groups I have along these lines about this topic. And we ended up settling on that you want a man's man with God's heart. Yeah. And yeah. that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for a bad boy. You just want a man, you know? And, but at the same time, or I've heard also a good guy with an edge, you know, yeah, that's for, but he's got to have God's heart and, and guys are the same way, you know, we, you know, they, they, they think they want a certain type of woman, but I love what you said that it make a great wife and don't want a daughter like that. So that's, that's some good stuff. I, that, I love that you're doing that. What else has God put on your heart? Is there anything in particular that he's been dealing with you about or haven't you share with people or? I think one of the main things that he's been encouraging me to remind people of is just to be content where he's placed you. I feel like we're so busy in a rush to be in what's next and next we're going to be this. This next season is my season of breakthrough. No, right now. Why can't right now be your season of breakthrough? Why can't right now be your season of this beautiful development, this beautiful process before you get to that next season? And I feel like we miss out on what God's doing right here. Like what character is he developing in you right now? Like, What's he pruning in you right now? Um, what is that? Because that is going to equip you for the next season that he's taking you in. And you can't be so focused on, oh, next year, I'm going to be, you know, this. Next year, I'm going to be that. Right now, where does God have you? Next year, I'm going to be married. You know what I mean? Like, all right, right now you're single. Let's find the beauty and where God placed you right now. Let's believe God today. God, I give you, you give me breakthrough today. Um, and a breakthrough can just be being patient with somebody because we all know you ain't been patient lately, right? So that's just an example. Yeah, that's that's really good. I'll be honest with you. That's something I, my message is God has a future for you. So I'm future focused. And oh, what you're talking about that I have, God's had to talk with me about a lot. It's just, you know, blooming where you are, enjoying the That's moment, the present. And you mentioned a word that I think is really important that we hate. Is I, I call it a seven-letter curse. It was a seven or eight-letter curse word. And it's <laughs> patience, man. It's just um, patience is tough. It's tough, but it's needed. You know, God, yeah. God is working on something if you don't see it yet, right? He's still putting yeah. some together. You don't want to give birth to this thing prematurely. So you got to wait on the Lord and and enjoy the moment. And that is yeah. easier said than done. But I think you're right. I think it's really, really important. Yeah. No, I agree. Just being content with where God placed you is, is a beautiful place to be. Because you'll take that contentment with you in the next season, the next place where God is for you. Like, you mm -hmm. need this season. And I've learned that every season is setting me up for where God's taking me. So I've learned, like, all right, God, if you brought this season on, then I trust you. Mm -hmm. Do I agree with you? No, but I've learned to depend on your faithfulness and trust your faithfulness, not what I think I need to understand with where, where you're taking me. So I've learned to just rest and say, you know what, God, you're working out everything for my good. I trust mm -hmm. you. So if you allow for this season to come into my life, then I accept it because I trust you so much with my whole life that if you've allowed it, then your hand is in it and it's on it and you work out everything for my good. Yeah, and that's the key word is just trusting them, right? Just yeah, God. I agree. Higher than ours, thoughts are higher than ours. Yeah. And he's got all this planned out. And mm -hmm. uh, fretting and worrying doesn't actually help. You just need to yeah. rest. Right? You just got to rest. God's got it. And 
roll with him. So I think that's that. What do you have? Obviously, you're always busy. You got some great things going on. Always so. busy. Um, so <laughs> I'm doing a lot of cool things that I can't quite share yet. But there's some other things that I have shared, and that is I have a. Um, it's called a No Smoke Women's Conference. Um, your sister's actually speaking at it. I'm super excited about that. Um, and that is in Atlanta, Georgia. That is um, July 29th through August 1st. And I'm so excited about it. Um, and what it, it, I actually got the conference idea from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they went through the fire and they came out without the smell of smoke. I like so, what that. I'm saying is, everything you've been through this past year, you're not going to smell like what you've been through. Yes, you've been through hard times. Yes, you lost your job. You've been evicted. You lost family members, but you're not going to smell like what you've been through. God is going to use it all for his glory. That is good. You're preaching now. <laughs> <laughs> Lady conference, because I might want to show up. but <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you you are so welcome. Come on. That's a good revelation right there. I'm not going to smell like what I went through. Yeah, and so they can go to pinkypromisconference.com. It is um, not going to be a virtual event. We are going to be in person. So the thing is with um, COVID and everything, I do have to cap the amount of people that can come. So we're almost sold out. Okay. Okay. All right. Go to pinkypromise.com. Yeah. Okay. So you guys hurry up and jump on that. It's going to mm -hmm. be good. So well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Yeah. Um, appreciate you taking the time. I'm, I know you guys so much and great things. I appreciate it. My kids I are like running around. I'm like, be quiet. I'm on a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate it. I'm, at least I don't have the dog right now. But he messed with me when I better stuff. So I definitely get it. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. And look forward to you. see each other yeah. again. I think I saw you at a conference a couple of years ago. And, you know, obviously that was before the world. But yeah. look forward to Cornelius again. And uh, for those that are connecting with us, uh, I just mentioned, of course, I got my book out, Bear Now, so if you want to learn how to... Congrats on your book. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so you can get that at andrebuck.com or amazon.com, and um, those who connected with me will see you online Sunday morning at 9 or 11, and of course, you can catch Heather at pinkypromise.com. Is there any other websites as well? Or, or it's pinkypromisconference.com. Um, but no, it just follow me on Instagram, Heather I Love. I post a lot of stuff on there, too. So come on over. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thanks a Bye. lot. You have a great day. Everybody Bye. will catch you. Bye. He demonstrated that he is.